Hello, everyone. Welcome to the last session of Balkanize 2019, uh, the panel discussion about exploring both the challenges and opportunities of cross-platform GPU standardization. Uh, my name is Alon Orbach. I'm from Samsung. We'll have brief introductions of our wonderful panelists. Uh, um, and to, the point of this session um, is now become a traditional feature of Balkanize, is to have a bit of an organized discussion that tends into a Q&A slash opinion being shouted out from the floor. Um, so um, I'm going to start off with, with um, Jan Harold on my right. Jan Harold Fredrickson um, is the lead architect for media software at ARM, uh, looking at GPU and API co-developments. Uh, he has represented ARM and Kronos since 2010. It's been nine years. It's, God, yeah, it's, it's just flown by. <laughs> uh, and has been involved with, with Vulcan from its inception. Um, next up, uh, Hans Christian Artsen from, which, um, as we heard earlier today, heads up Spear B Cross. Uh, Hans Christian is an independent developer and leads the, um, projects like Spear B Cross and also Fossilize. Uh, there's been quite a few interesting blogs on that recently um, uh, that he's put up. Uh, he previously worked at ARM, um, hacking on the Mali GPUs with Vulkan in particular. Um, next, um, Alex Smith from Feral. Uh, Alex is a graphics developer at Feral Interactive, working on Linux and Android ports of AAA game titles. And he's led the development of Vulkan support in most of Feral's Linux releases over the last few years. Uh, and finally, um, Lou Kramer. Like my best German pronunciation, uh, is a de developer technology engineer at AMD who just ha um, spoke at the last talk in the game engineering group. Uh, and her job is to work with developers and help their games look beautiful and run fast on AMD CPUs and GPUs. Uh, so, welcome to you all. Um, uh, and finally, uh, myself, uh, Alon Orbach, I'm part of the game ecosystem team at Samsung, which is part of the overall Galaxy game dev. Um, and we work together with uh, game developers, uh, make their life as best as possible on our flagship mobile devices and make Android and Vulkan even more awesome. So um, <laughs> um, I would like to uh, attempt to, as well as kind of look at how things have gone, also try and look at what we can do about, from our experience of, of, of Vulkan, three years old now, um, where, where its direction is. Um, and it is true to say that everything is awesome. Um, however, we have learned that some things are more awesome than others. I think <laughs> is the correct way to phrase this, uh, which is what I'd like to explore today. But to start off, let's start off with a positive, uh, <laughs> just to ease us in. Um, and I wanted to ask the panel, um, starting with you, Jan Harold, um, what, what feature in Vulcan are you most fond of and why? So, so I, yeah, um, yeah, I'm not sure feature as such. Aspect. Uh, aspect, <laughs> yes, aspect is better. Um, so I think the, the CPU load side of it I'm pretty happy with. Um, so I guess we tried to do different things. So one was you know, to make a API that was a bit more transparent, and so you sort of had less driver magic going on. Um, uh, which would then make drivers run, you know, require less CPU cycles to do their work. Uh, and I think that part of it has worked out quite well. Um, I'm not sure the drivers necessarily got super simple. They still have some complexity to deal with, um, but they do require less CPU cycles, which leaves more goodness for everything else on the system. How about yourself? Yeah, uh, it's kind of a weird feature to be my favorite, but actually having persistently mapped memory is my biggest, it's my favorite feature of Vulkan. It's, it's because, I mean, before in the old days of GL, before you had, well, if you're lucky, you have a good GL 4.5 implementation as like one in the world. Um, then you can have uh, ARB storage buffer, which was, that's basically a core Vulkan, and just being able to map memory persistently, hammer that is visible by the GPU, either by host memory or directly to the GPU if you're unified architecture. And just not having to deal with the issues of you have to map a buffer and then unmap it and all the stupid API overhead you got from that alone. And just being able to make your own scratch LK for uniform buffers alone is like, well, yeah, it's my favorite feature. Being able to do that in standard core, no fuss, it just works. Alex. Yeah, I think I basically echo those, some of those points 
as well, because like the CPU performance of Vulkan has been like one of the major benefits for us over GL, and also the pr predictability of the performances. Because like going back to when we've been working on GL, you have like things you've got profiling and stuff. Don't know why we can't see into the uh, see what it's doing, but then go to and it's like it's doing what you tell it. You know exactly what it's going to be doing. You know when it's going to be stalling to do certain things. It's just much. More know what's going on. It's a very good bit for us. Lou, do you, do you concur? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of. I mean, I like Vulkan because it's so explicit. And actually, when I started to do graphics programming, I started basically with Vulkan. I did a bit of DirectX 11 before, but it was quite of obscure, and I never really understood what was happening. And when I started to program Vulkan, I actually also understood the GPU better, better because of this. And that's what I really appreciate. Before we delve, delve into a couple of points raised there, can I just see an indication of how alive the room is? Um, uh, uh, who might be jumping in with a question or a point of opinion at some point during the next hour? Don't, this, you, this is not committing fact. <laughs> just want to get an indication <coughs> if there's anyone with something <coughs> just on the tip of their tongue. Okay, <laughs> a few hands. Okay, this is good. Um, but just in terms of one of the key philosophies we try to, to um, bind ourselves by is the, the idea of no driver magic. Um, I'm definitely sensing the pressure to kind of maybe if there should be a bit of driver magic coming in. Do you think that's uh, something you hear um, either in the driver teams or in dev tech, um, or do you want more driver magic as a developer? Is is are we were we right, and and is that still holding tight? Sure. Right. Um, so I think we were right, um, but I also see that pressure coming. Um, and so far, I think mostly avoided. Um, but but the the pressure is so for for us as a driver developer, the pressure comes when oh suddenly there's an important title out there that maybe it does something stupid, and well, please make it go faster. You know, uh, no, cut, cut to, cut to, you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to do driver magic. Um, and I think we have held on so far on that particular front, because uh, while Vulkan um, is intended to be explicit, it also makes it really, really hard to do driver magic. Um, so if it was easier to do, we may have been more tempted by now. Any, any, anything you'd like to have off your hands and being done back in the driver? Um, maybe, like, if there's, I don't wouldn't, wouldn't want anything that's like, like huge amounts of driver magic that's going to be just the driver doing tons of stuff behind your back that's going back to things you can't predict what the driver is doing, but if it's just conversations here and there you can do that's not going to, like, it's not going to hurt us or anything. Fine with that, just saying like driver is doing. Yeah, I think the biggest magic thing we're seeing now is like the framework for compression thing, which is like we're supposed to have this explicit API, but all the vendors have a completely different idea of what compression is. So, and there the driver magic comes in because often there's a case where yeah, it works in 99% of cases, but that 1% case, well, it's explicit and we can't, you can't just do things at the last minute of getting another driver. It's like, yeah, just disable it. And that, that's a case where, let's say, you're using a legacy API and it might end up performing way better just because of the explicit drivers force drivers to be very slow in way. Or not slow, but they end up running slow on the GPU just because of, you can't deal with that 1% case. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of seeing the, the issue from both uh, both sides, both trying to hack on the driver and then trying to make applications run on drivers. Um, I think one of the biggest issues is that Vulkan can support things that makes things extremely difficult for the driver to do optimal things. Like just having the fact that you have aliasing, memory aliasing, which can be super useful, but it also means the driver has to like, hmm, no, I can't do anything now. <laughs> that's, that's annoying. 
And I kind of wish there was uh, from the beginning way to say, okay, this resource can never be ALS by any magic or just do, do your thing, basically. But that's impossible in some cases, some drivers, which is uh, frustrating. There are cases where the explicit nature actually hurts performance in weird edge cases. Yeah, you, you toss in quite a few of those with DCC. Yeah, I mean, but like my experience with working with game net is that they're usually, they're kind of keen to understand what the driver is doing, and also understand why the driver is doing certain things related to the hardware. And if I explain the reasoning, usually they also understand, and they're not really asking for driver magic because, I mean, there are reasons why the driver has to do it this way. So, yeah, that's why you can understand the in this case. Yeah, so for the for the kind of thing like framework compression, I think it would help if like developers gave more de um, the IHV, sorry, gave more details, like as you did about what what specific conditions you need to get a framework driver that kind of thing for all kinds of like where where an IHV wants you to thing to get the performance in there. I think IHVs can actually dock can have like best guides, but this is what I kind of need to do. So like that information mm -hmm. I think you're sort of that was a hand waving interjection there. <laughs> no, was, uh, you can finish if you want. But, no, um, don't finish. <laughs> it's fine. Um, I was just going to say that um, I agree with um, John that um, as as the as the vendor right now with Vulcan we can't really fix your performance, and we also can't really fix your application. Which means that if you, as a developer, if you don't respect the spec, and oftentimes you don't use the validation layers, then we can't help you. Or at least we should not help you. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so no. I think. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, no. I was going to say, I think there's, yeah, there's like things like validation errors. Like if, you ship, if you're shipping validation errors, like that's like because Vulcan like there's a spec that you all the things you can do with the API, um, but not all of that is necessarily going to be best practice for a given IHV because it's like you can set whatever flags on your image you like that disable DCC or whatever like that. It's, it's like there's nothing. Look at the spec and say, oh, I can do this, but some vendor might their driver might really dis doing that and it's going to put you on a slow path. So it's like there needs to be more kind of information that tells you what is going to be giving you the best performance. So how, how are things going with PerfDoc? Uh, <laughs> <that's me. laughs> that's that's the that that's wasn't the answering it. No, uh, OK, yeah. Save the PerfDoc for <laughs> uh, Yeah, yes. yeah. Take the pressure off. <laughs> it's, it's more of a question, I guess, for um, Alex mostly. Um, you, know, you mentioned that, oh, maybe it's not obvious where the fast pass and stuff are, but um, one of the things I remember from the bad old days of GL is having about 50 ways to do like data upload and stuff like yes. that. Um, <laughs> is it, you know, it, yes, it's true that we, I, th I think I agree that we could give more feedback to developers about what's going on in general, um, but is it better? Than, than you had before. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So, yeah, like the buffer upload thing is like, uh -huh. however many ways to do that in GL and each, each, each different driver has their own path. So, yeah, like, we, we ship stuff on GL, it's like use this path on that driver, use this path yeah. on that driver, yes. like four different buffer upload paths for different drivers. There's a reason I mentioned persistent buffer upload. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so that's, that's great Vulcan, like, yeah, for sure there's, for sure there's less things like that. But then, say for example, Kind uh, buffer and descriptor. Certain things, certain things, certain ways you can do that perform certain drives compared to others. So that kind of thing. But it's, yeah, for sure, it's better. Yeah. So, so what, one, one plug for something we're trying to do in, in the Vulcan working group um, is uh, it's it's a gallant effort. It's going to be seeing how it goes, but to try and provide um, cross vendor best practice guides. So based on actual features rather than having to go trawl through uh, seven or more PDF documents and find the right section and so on, is to actually uh, uh, have single single documents. And that's something that Chris 
um, as our DevRel lead is leading on. Uh, it, it'd be great, uh, by the way, just to ensure it happens, uh, do speak to your favorite GPU vendor and encourage them to support this effort. Um, do, do, just as a show of hands, do people think that's a useful thing, or do you think you, you're happy with um, having um, GPU-specific, so architecture-specific documents? Can I get an uh, indication for interest in, in such such an effort? And skeptics? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, Dubai. <laughs> um, I think that it's, it's definitely a challenging, sorry, Eva, so um, chipping in. And disinformation about what the driver can or can't do, like, oh, now I can't enable this CC. Why can't it be? And that, that, that is why I mentioned PerfDoc, and Wasim was looking at me yeah. happily. Because Perf, <laughs> <laughs> Perf Doc is an ex a layer that is trying to provide performance, so not, not things which are incorrect in the API, but good performance guidance. Yes, I wasn't going to say anything. We've got a, a version 1.1, and hopefully we can add some of the things we got on the roadmap. Not sure if we can do things like that, but uh, for ARPC, for example, we can give some guidance so that you get it or not. And are you welcoming welcoming contributions? To Absolutely, that? <laughs> GitHub, so ARPC is welcome. And are you getting contributions from other GPU vendors? Not yet. <laughs> so I think that, that that's an example of an effort, and it's 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 still it's, it's weird. It's we're three years old, but still early days uh, to try and get some. Hmm? Yeah, I think this just really just a question of do you have a Kronos Vulkan layer on like Kronos group slash performance stuff, or or is it a case where you you we want every IHV to create their own little layer, or do we want to join the project like kind of like we do in G validation layer, except it's for performance. Yeah, and there's areas where they contradict. Um, uh, you can think think of quite a few where there's uh, only a single vendor that recommends something. Uh, and yeah. others disagree. So that, that part of the challenge is for us to actually form those, whether it's, it, it's a, as a layer or in documents, so actually how do you combine all those contradicting bits of guidance? Yeah, uh, the, I guess, so I think some things can be captured that way, like the probably the compression, lots of the, maybe at least a lot of the compression stuff, like the things you had on the slide could be captured there and actually matches pretty much one-to-one -one with what we would recommend. Um, but I think we we had we did find when we did render doc back in the day there are, there are other things that are tricky to extract from the driver uh, and I guess uh, Lou also mentioned some things are like GPU card specific or and, and it's it's hard to get them you know to replicate all that stuff in a different layer and then and then you have to worry about the layer and your driver getting out of sync and oh. uh, so so some things are probably better to get us feedback from the drivers directly rather than trying to bake them in. Yeah, I think primary is primary case where this is really hard can be stuff like multi pass where it's like, okay, you want to fuse sub pass, but does it though? And kinda want to query it, but 